Welcome to the Global Author Podcast. I'm Matt Connor Whiteley, science fiction, fantasy, and a global author, bringing you publishing, writing, book marketing, and a global author ideas of your book to help you sell more books and write better books. For more information and your free global author training, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 39 of the Global Author Podcast with me, Colin Whiteley. And today's episode is on an introduction to copyright for writers and authors. And I do just want to say like, up front, I'm not a lawyer. This is not any sort of legal professional or any sort of type um, professional advice. But copyright is the most important thing that, well, in least in a, yeah, but like at least in terms of business providers to learn. Because if you do not understand copyright as a writer you will not make any money from it. And even if writing is just a hobby for you, copyright is still important to know because of so you are um, aware of this because you never know if one of your hobby stories is going to turn into um, anything like major though. But I think it will become a lot clearer in the main content part of today's episode. But copyright I absolutely love because it's basically how we make money. So I cannot, I cannot stress my excitement enough. So we're moving on to... A quick personal update for today before the content of today's episode. Well, there's not a lot that I actually want to say because there's been a lot of like personal things because we've had a, a like a death in the family, so there's like um lots about that. So I won't like go on about that. But in terms of the writing and the publishing this week, I've done done a like twelve thousand words um forensic psychology short book. So that's the second short book that I was going to be like putting out. And to be honest, I'm actually quite surprised that it turned out like that length because I had no idea it was like, going to. Be be like that long but I'm really proud of it and I think this is a great book because it's definitely one of my more voicey non-fiction book because if you read any of my like non-fiction whether it's my psychology book but, like all the non-fiction for writers that like it's definitely like my voice it's definitely like me talking to you as in my personal like you know about opinions and like experiences but when this book talks about FBI profiling I get so voicey and I really and I really complain about it simply because it's so bad it's so unscientific and it is honestly why psychology gets such a bad rap in uh, yes, yeah, like in like some circles. Even though psychology despises profiling as well, so yes, yeah, so, like this book, I'm really really pleased with. So I should begin to like um, edit it and like proofread it before I send it to a, a proofreader, and I hope I should have both of them up on pre-order by the end of next week though and also in terms of like publishing i'm also publishing um, f- um yeah but like four short stories so uh, these were my early short stories that i did so i'm like them out there so i'm like publishing them wide and then i'm also doing um, a small paperback for them through kdb print and also ingram spark they were like just in case they get a few sales because these earlier short stories they are still intellectual property assets that i can license into ebook paperback and audiobook format and all all the different rights though i mean in uh, yeah but like meaning though whether i can still potentially make uh, make like quite a bit of uh, money like which is why i'm beginning to like, put them out there then the only other thing that i want to say is that this book i'm all yeah it's that this week i've also beginning to um read the isolize or i'm sort of beginning to like revamp a really older psychology book that i wrote like two years ago that was about uh, basically about global mental health and like how like different cultures see uh, like mental health and how they treat it it's a really interesting book but because it was one of my first self-published books, it was horrendous. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it was not horrendous. It just was not as professional as I can do it now. So I've actually been, yes, you know, so I've actually been like redoing it, making it look a bit more professional, like updating the cover, making the blurb better, also formatting the paperback a bit more. God, and uh, to be honest, it's actually been quite a eerie experience because now that I've been doing this almost. Um, two four years now well, i'll be entering my third year of doing this of like next month and i just think that it's really quite humbling how far i've come and also how much that i've learned and this is the great thing about the author journey there will always be people behind you and there will always be people ahead of you yeah so that was actually like quite uh, yeah so that was actually quite like good to though but because another reason why i'm actually like um updating it is also because i want to put the print book on like um ingram s spark and as always, I always like, love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, conwiley, conwiley.net. You can always leave a comment on the show notes at The Global Author. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at The Global Author. And today's episode has been sponsored by the Alliance of Independent Authors. 
platform authors and this actually fits a great in terms of like copyright because one of the main reasons that I became a member of the Alliance of, of Independent Authors is that yes well it's like not only for their England Spark discount which I highly highly recommend that saves you thousands of dollars and pounds but also though when like um if you have a, a traditional publishing contract or let's say that a publisher like approaches you and they says that um we would like uh, to uh, produce the foreign right version of your book uh, and echo yes and like etc like they have this a uh, really great uh, contract you know with your service like meaning that, that you uh, can send them the contract and their legal experts so will like go over it uh, for it and to say right this isn't right you might want to clarify this and actually um for my first book which was the end of the turn which sort of got traditionally published i actually sent them yeah well i actually like sent them like a contract saying that i know like this is bad but how bad is it and then like they said and like they were still like good about it like they were not judgmental which was always a bit like concerned about saying oh my god like why did you sign this because that's what i was like thinking like and they gave me like a few tips now i never acted on those tips but I really recommend that that you would. So the Alliance of Independent Authors is a great organisation that I've recommended tons of times on, yeah, you know, like on the podcast, and they really are promoting copyright and the people learning like about it. So I cannot stress how great the Alliance of Independent Authors is like enough. So I really, really recommend it. And if you want to use my affiliate link, meaning that I get a small percentage of the sale with no extra cost to you, then that please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash alliance. So let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So as I, so as I already said, like, we're going to be looking at copyright, which I cannot stress how much of an important area this is for writers, because this is how we make money. Because as authors and writers, we do not write books. You might write a manuscript, but you do not write books. We, as authors and writers, create intellectual property assets that we license into different types of books, and we also license it into other types of things. So I am going to explain this all in a really interesting and really easy to understand way, but this is a great thing though, because when you understand copyright and what it means, you'll realise that being a writer is the most amazing job in the world. I can yeah, that's very, very true. And I also just I wanted to say that, just to like remind you, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal or any sort of official advice. So your manuscript is intellectual property. So when you finish your manuscript or book or book, you have just made an intellectual property asset that is automatically protected by copyright, which I think is amazing, but also well done for creating that asset asset because this intellectual property asset will now be protected by copyright law for the rest of your life and 50 to 70 years after your death which wow that's just <laughs> that's just like brilliant or another way of saying this is this asset can earn you money for the rest of your life plus 50 to 70 years after death and that's the amazing thing because you've worked for a few hours a few days etc and that money can earn you for um for a decade which i think is brilliant and this is why i love copyright law because as soon as you create something it's protected under law because even like there's a blog post that i'm like reading from this is protected by law which is another great thing though and that's Actually, like something quite uh, scary though is that um, because I hopefully plan to live for another like 50 to 70 years yes and then uh, the asset earns money for like another like 50 years my intellectual prophecy could potentially like make me money for like the next um century which I think is quite brilliant and hopefully from the turn of my voice you can actually tell how excited I am about intellectual prophecy and how brilliant this is but another aspect of like intellectual property though is the rights in your manuscript because another great thing about intellectual property asset is they can be divided into millions of rights like a few to like exploit because these rights can be divided into format country and language so i won't go into this too much but you need to be aware of this because Generally speaking, the main rights you would need to know are the ebook, paperback, large print, hardback, and audiobook rights. Well, right, so. And there are other book rights like non English languages and, and the workbook for non fiction. But each of these rights is a way for you to make money as a writer. And you can like, divide these up however you would want to. But, like, for example, you could self publish the ebook and the paperback version of your book. Then you could license. I'm going to be talking more about that next week, but you license, you never sell rights. Then uh, you can license the audiobook rights to a publisher. Then uh, you could theoretically license the hardback rights to another publisher. Now, the reason why I say theoretically is because a print-only deal is extremely 
hard to get, if not impossible. I know Mark Dawson has it, but again, though, it's just like something to think about because it can happen from the moment. So hopefully all of this is actually going like got you thinking. What happens when you give traditional publishers your work? So currently in the publishing industry, traditional publishers want all rights, all formats, all languages and all territories. I re- I'm really not pleased with myself if I signed one of these deals. And this is a standard publishing contract that you will receive if you ever go to a traditional publishing deal. Do not sign these. Do not sign these. So there are lots of reasons why you just shouldn't. But here are some basic reasons. So because this is just an introduction. Okay, so the first one is a traditional publisher will not use all the rights rights, and as you've given these rights over to the publisher, you cannot use these rights yourself. And also you have lost your intellectual property assets for the for the life of like copyright. Also, if you gave the publisher all language rights and the chance of your publisher actually using these foreign language rights is almost non existent. And again though, you've lost another income stream. In fact, you've actually lost tons, you've actually lost uh, I don't even know how many languages that there are in the world, but let's say you've lost at least 50 potential income streams. In fact, now actually, because you've got all the rights in all the different... Wow, you've probably... It is very possible that you've lost like thousands of um, income streams from that one book. Wow, that's scary. Then the final reason is that also, if you gave your publisher the rights to the book in all territories, your publisher won't do that, won't do that. And like, as a global author... This is quite horrifying because your publisher will probably make it available to the US and the UK market. If you're lucky, you'll get it into the other European markets, probably Canada, Australia and New Zealand. But I will be shocked if your publisher makes it available to readers in South America, Africa and Asia because they're not big markets. They're not important markets to traditional publishers. And again, as a global author, that is pitiful honestly pitiful that people think that just because they're not in a major country they're not worth the time of like um making the book available to them even though it takes no time at all that's just wrong i think though i think though what i'm trying to say though is that these three continents with millions or probably at least two billion um, potential um readers will never ever see your book do you want that I don't think so. So, but yes, this was just a like introductionary look there, but I really hope that you've enjoyed today's episode on intellectual property assets and why it's important to value your IP. Then there are four resources that I want to like give you uh, for, like uh, to find out more. So you've got Kristen Catherine Rush at chriswrites.com. Cannot recommend her great blog enough. You've got the copyright handbook, what writer, what every writer needs to know about copyright. There's a very new edition that I'm getting very soon. And then you've also got the Alliance of Independent Authors, Self-Publishing Advice. And a book I cannot recommend highly enough is The Magic Bakery by Dean Wesley Smith. Or, and actually, yeah, because I just forgot like another one, Rethinking the Writing Business by Kristen Catherine Rush. Definitely get those two books. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Please check out the Alliance of Independent Authors at theglobalauthor.com forward slash alliance. And have a great day, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Thanks sir, for listening today. I hope you found it useful. For more information, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And if you want to connect, then please reach out to me on Twitter at The Global Author. And you can find me on Facebook. For your free and exclusive Global Author video training, please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash free. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.